Now, before we tackle the bishop, I want to quickly talk about text, or any closed curve like a logo, and how to handle that. I see a lot of people struggling with this, and a lot of close but not quite good enough methods seem to be being used. The remesh modifier is often used, and it's just not quite good enough. I'm going to quickly show you how to retopologize one letter, and from there, hopefully, you'll see that you can use the method to retopologize any text so that it becomes a perfect subdivision surface model. So let's start by deleting the default cube and pressing Shift and A to add some text. I'm just going to leave it as the Blender default font, but this method will work with any font. Now, Blender really likes to have things standing up so that their main detail can be shown in the front view. But for some reason, the text is aligned to the top view. If I press 7, that's the top view. So the first thing I'm going to do is press RX90. And then when we've got the front view, there it is. I'll press full stop and zoom in to center it. What I would normally do now is press Control A and uh, apply the uh, rotation. But if I do that, it gives me an error saying fonts can only have scale applied. Uh, who knows what that's all about? It doesn't really matter. We can do that later. But it can be a good idea to apply transformations once in a while in Blender. We'll do that later. Now I can press Tab and delete that and change it to my letter A. Oh, we need a lowercase a because it's more interesting. It's got lots of curves, a few pointed parts, a hole in the middle, lots of classic problems to retopologize. So now we want to go over to the curve properties, which is this small green, uh, well, A, funnily enough, just what we're doing. And uh, we can change the properties of, of uh, text in here. The first thing is the resolution preview is just way too high for our needs. We're going to end up with a really dense mesh if we do that, and that's not really what we want. Subdivision surface models should be as light as possible. So for the Blender font, I normally use three. It just turns slightly jagged, and that's what we want. The final model won't look jagged. And the next thing we want to do is turn off the fill completely. We just want the outline. That's how we work with text. That's how you retopologize any closed curves. So now we can go and convert that object to a mesh, which is in the object menu, convert, and to mesh. If we tab to edit mode, we can see that we've got these points vaguely describing our A. And this is a good time to start seeing how we're going to start joining up faces. So. Let me just quickly show you. We're going to have we're going to fill it in with faces like this, but we want to make sure that there are enough edges. So I'll just switch back to edit mode, and we've got uh, of this little span of curve, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven spans there, and on the top we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. We could do with another one. So let's uh, if I just press Control and R, which works on curves, it just adds points. I can I can add this point here, and press GG and slide it up to you know, somewhere that it's going to connect to. That that looks good. Um, what about this section here? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and one, two, three, four, five, six. So they're going to collect up nicely. Now we're going to connect all these around the curve. So we go, so we have a look and we see we've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And here we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we need an extra one here. Uh, where should we put it? Um, they're going to connect maybe here. Now, because we've changed the shape of this curve, we want to uh, we need to relax it a little. But we don't want to pull this point around. It's, it just won't work. You can't be precise enough by pulling, pushing, and pulling points around. We're going to use an automatic process. First of all, I'm just going to add a, an extra one because these, these are quite long. So I'm going to just add an extra point in there. So I'm going to click this point, and then with Control held down, I'm just going to move around until I get to the other side. Now over in our loop tools in the end panel, which you just press N and go to the edit pad to see them, then we use something called relax. And if we just press it once, you'll see that the whole curve became more of a curve. Just pressing it once will do. That's absolutely fine. And I don't think any of the other curves really need to be changed. So now we can get on and retopologize this letter. If we select everything and press F to fill, It'll fill it in with these kind of big, ugly faces. We don't, we're not going to use them. We're going to delete them in a second. But uh, it's essential for the next process because we're going to inset all of these faces by a really small amount. So I'll press I and 0.001. And that's it. Now we go back to face select mode. Just click anywhere on one of these big faces and press X and delete faces. And there's another one here. Press X and delete faces. Now if we zoom in, we'll see that we have this really small border around the arrow shape. And that's just what we want to retopologize everything. Now, if we go back to point select mode and press one, we can alt and click anywhere outside of our letter 
and it will select all of the vertices which make up the outer side of this little border. And if I zoom right in, we'll see what's going to happen next. I can press GG and it'll start to slide it, but it can only go so far, unless I press ALT, in which case all of the vertices travel along their edges. Let me zoom out and, and I'll press GG and press ALT and you'll see that all of the edges start to slide along their correct directions. Now if I go too far, you may be able to see that some of the vertices are starting to overlap, so you've got to be careful how far we go. If you look at the edge slide number in the top left hand corner of the 3D view, you can see the edge slide distance. And it looks like I can go up to, I could go up to 13, but I'm not going to go up to 13, I'm just going to go to 6. So I'm going to type minus 6 while I'm still holding down the Alt key. And then just hit Enter. And now I can see I have this really good border all the way around the shape. Now we need to do the hole inside the A, so if I click inside there, I've selected all of those vertices, press GG, hold down ALT and type minus 6 and hit enter and then you can let go of the ALT key. And that looks great, now we're ready to fill in these faces, which we can do with the help of the F2 add-on. You do need to have the F2 add-on enabled uh, in order for this to work. So I'll go to edge select mode by pressing 2 on the keyboard and select, uh, well this edge here is a good place to start. And just press F and it will start filling those in and I'm going to stop when I get to there because this, this is a, a different area. And then I'll go to the other end here and select this edge and press F and that's just filled up to there, that's perfect. Now I want to start to fill in around here but to do that I need to uh, connect these two vertices first so I'm just going to select them both and press F and then I'm going to go back to edge select mode and select just that edge. Now if I press F now, it, it can often do something unpredictable. We need to tell Blender which direction we want to go. So I'm going to go back to point select mode and I've still got those selected and I'm just going to shift select these two and I'm just to tell it that this is where I want my first face, F. So now I can just go back to edge select mode and, and select this new edge in the corner and continue pressing F and press F and it will fill in those faces round to, to about the, round to there that seems good now i want to fill in some phases up here and i can see that uh, between here i've got uh, one two three vertices here and over this side I, i've only got one so i need another two edges in here so i'll press ctrl r in there just left click and right click and ctrl r in there left click and right click and now i can select this edge again and just fill those in f f f f and that looks great but we need to add a little more resolution so I'm going to press Control R, which will start adding loops. And until everything's kind of vaguely square. So let's add two loops in there. And then maybe uh, two loops around here. And then you don't have to be too precise here. Uh, people think you do, you really don't. So now we can press Control R here, add another one, maybe one here. And that looks good enough. That's, uh, that's going to work really well. We don't need it to be a high resolution. The subdivision surface modifier is going to handle the resolution. Now the most important curves in this are the control curves, which control the, the softness of the very edges. And we're going to add them just inside the mesh at this first loop. So if I press Control R here and hover over one of the edges here, we'll see that we get this yellow line that goes all the way around our mesh. It will always go all the way around your mesh. So left click to confirm it, then right click to leave it in the middle, and then right click again and I like to choose Mark Seam to make it red, so I know that this is one of my control loops, which controls my curvature. And I do the same on the hole on the inside. Just put one in here, and left click, right click, right click again, and say Mark Seam. And that looks great. Uh, if we just go to Object Mode, I can press Control and 3. I can see a 2D version of my shape back to edit mode and I, I might want to tighten up this edge here so I just add a loop and slide that along doesn't matter where slide one along here just to sharpen up those corners I might want to add one here and maybe add one here it doesn't it really doesn't matter where you put them and then I want to select everything and press E to extrude and say just to upper distance 0.1 and that was good, change it to shade smoothing. Now I need to handle the uh, the outside because these, are, these aren't squares, so let's add some loop cuts here. Just uh, two will probably do, and everything's looking very good. But now I need some more control loops. Oh, I need to do that on the inside as well, so I can just add two loops inside the hole as well. Now I wanna add another control loop. You can never have too much control in a subdivision surface model. 
and add one there and just slide it up. Mark it as a seam because it's a control loop and another one at the bottom here. Slide it down. Mark it as a seam. Do the same on the inside. We need control loops there. Slide that up. Mark it as a seam. And just the last one at the bottom. Uh, just until it goes around the inside. Move it down and vaguely see where it's going. Mark seam. And that's our mesh done. If we now go over to the modifier panel, we can actually just select the on cage and we can see exactly how our mesh is going. Now I have these funny little pointed areas and you may have some of these too. In fact, you probably will. So the next thing you have to do is press A to select everything and then press Alt and N and we want to recalculate the normals outside. And that just fixes all of those problems. Now everything is a perfectly smooth curve. All of the edges are four spoked poles so the light will flow over everything perfectly. We have uh, very fine control over our curvature, which we can affect by alt and clicking any of the red loops and just pressing GG and sliding them in and out will change the softness of our edges. And it's always GG. We don't have to worry about which axis they're on. We can just uh, control the curvature perfectly. Perhaps we can see how that deforms now. We can uh, add a modifier. We can go and add the wave modifier. And if I just change a few things here, I know what settings I need. I change this to 0.1 for the height, uh, 0.3 for the width, 10 for the narrowness. And if I go on time and change it to 0.01, and then I, I change this to edit mode and on cage. And then we'll, if I press play, we'll see that this this warps perfectly. Probably don't need that so high, change that to two. And if, as we look around, we will see exactly what's happening. Oh, with these settings, I know it's going to loop at 180 frames, so let's just change it to 180. And we can press play again and just kind of watch that guy and see it just uh, in normal mode. And we'll see that there's no artifacting anywhere. Uh, this mesh uh, rotates very well. We can actually see the, the geometry it's considering uh, as it's moving by going to this little icon here and going to viewport display and wireframe. And then if we go back to our modifiers and change the uh, optimal display of subdivision so that it's turned off, then we'll see the actual mesh that uh, it's considering. And that depends completely on our subdivision surface modifier level. So if we change it down to zero, that's the actual mesh. Change it to one, and that's uh, a little higher resolution, two, three, and it's completely non-destructive. You can you can have uh, you can have it uh, as smooth as you need. We we'll find that that works perfectly, and we still have complete control with all of our red control loops just by pressing GG to change uh, any of the curvature and the softness of the edges. And that is how we retopologize text. The more you do it, the better you'll get at it. It's really good practice to take an entire font and uh, retopologize each letter individually. And you save them all in a file, and you will always have text that you can do virtually anything with. It'll be, it can be used for soft bodies, you can put armatures inside of it, you can use uh, the simple to form, waves, all sorts of things that manipulate it, and it will always look really quite beautiful. Good, so next we will get back to the bishop, where there's some uh, really good tips, some amazing information in there which I know you're going to love. And if anyone's interested, I can make a video of myself re-topologizing uh, an entire font. If you want to watch that for an hour or two, uh, just me pulling points around, then I, I could make one of those. Um, if anyone's interested, who knows?